G'day, how are we all? Hopefully you're doing better than these poor blokes. That's Shadow of Rome, an action stealth game from 2005 that was so entertaining for me, purely due to the gore and blood effects. I hadn't really seen anything like it at the time. Colosseum Road to Freedom was another gladiator game I had a lot of fun with, and I was showing both of these off to some friends the other day, and started also thinking about Rise Son of Rome, which, whilst not a full-fledged gladiator title, did feature an arena mode. Then I wondered what other gladiator games are out there, and how many of them are any good. Some might not really reach the criteria of being a gladiator game, so I'll mention which ones those are, and you can let me know if you would count it or not. The reason I'm keeping them in the list is purely because they were mentioned multiple times in threads when I was trying to Google some other gladiator games, because there was only really a few that I remembered off the top of my head. So starting with the oldest and working our way up, let's kick it off with The Running Man. If you're not familiar with the movie, it's about a character who is forced to participate in a game show where people are hunted and killed for entertainment. The game of The Running Man, naturally, is a beat em up. There isn't too much to say about this one from my own experience on account of the high score screen being the furthest I could actually get. I did try a couple of different versions of the Commodore 64 emulator, but to no avail. Here's some gameplay from AL82 Retro Gaming Long Plays, just to give you a quick idea of what the game was like. Probably a good thing I wasn't able to get into this one. Die by the Sword, a very innovative game from 1998 due to its use of physics based animations for its combat rather than baked in animations and simple attack buttons, though that option does exist for those who would rather play it that way. It is weird, janky, runs at about 20 frames a second, but I love how different it is. Unfortunately, trying to make something never seen before comes with the risk of it not being received well by the general public as was the case here, with sales being very low. The main game, or the main quest for Die By The Sword, is a dungeon crawler where you're trying to rescue your love. The gladiator aspect comes from this arena mode, where you're able to insert up to three enemies of different types, such as orcs and minotaurs. I wasn't able to properly grasp the mouse controls though, and swinging wildly at these enemies isn't always going to win you the fights. When you do land successive hits, it is very satisfying and rewarding due to the fact you're able to lop off limbs and chip away at the flesh of your foes. Definitely something I'll try to revisit later and maybe rebind controls for because I don't have some of the buttons that are part of the default control scheme. If you're going to give this a go yourself, be sure to purchase a copy from GOG and apply the extended mod, which allows higher resolutions and applies some fixes to the game. Obviously with games that are this old, you can't really do much about the polygonal graphics and everything, it's going to still look very dated, but at least with the higher resolutions, you can play this 4K if you want, that will give you a sharper image and so it just helps the general visuals look much clearer. Circus Maximus Chariot Wars. Chariot Racing was part of the gladiatorial games, so it's definitely a fitting game for this list. The control scheme is surprisingly in depth as well. It's not just about accelerating, turning and attacking. You've got high, low, double swings and a special attack, blocking, leaning in order to keep your chariot upright and whipping to give you a quicker boost from standstill. It can be pretty chaotic, though kind of annoying due to extreme rubber banding, which means an opponent will always be catching up to you. From the small amount that I played, there didn't really seem to be any discernible difference between the options that make up your team, and it seems like unlocking more tracks could be a bit of a grind due to the small amount of currency you receive for finishing races. Given how long it can take to finish a single race, I'm not exactly chomping at the bit to fully unlock everything, 
when I think most of what the game offers can be shown in a race or two. If you need some help figuring out the game, there's a handy series of tutorials that will take you through everything. I kind of wish there was a sequel that had some ragdolling for the character models and also more gore because it could have just made it a much more entertaining experience. The Gladiators of Rome. This was a disappointing one because it looked very different and I was very interested to play it because of how different it looked from just regular melee gladiator games that will be coming up in the list. It uses this kind of turn-based active battle system. You're able to use a couple of different abilities or just go for a regular attack on your opponent or try to go for a defend or move out of the way. And when your opponent is at pretty much one HP, you can use a killing blow, which is a special animation that will play. And it also gets you a little extra gold for getting those sorts of kills. From what I could gather, the game is about forming a gladiator team and fighting in various arenas and you work your way up to bigger arenas and also different kinds of combat. So you can start coming up against lions or they might put lions in the middle of the arena and you're tasked with picking up things that you can find on the ground. Between battles, you're able to purchase more slaves to train up as well as new weapons and armor using the money you win in the battles. What was annoying though, is that I couldn't do anything about the crashes. No matter the compatibility mode I was using, it would crash randomly as well. So it could be the second battle or it could be the eighth battle. I didn't see any way to save the game either. So my only option was to start the game again, which might not have been too bad if the combat wasn't so just unyielding. There's no auto attack by default. You are meant to cycle through each person that needs a new command and assign it to them over and over and over again. With two people on the team, it's kind of annoying. Increase the team size beyond that and it is tedious at best. It's an interesting idea though because it's essentially a roguelike. You're building your team from nothing and you're going through battle after battle, upgrading them, giving them new weapons. And I imagine the idea is that you get to the end and you could start all over again, go for a different team composition and such. But I think it's a bit too slow. If you were to do something like this, you would need to be able to complete a full run or cycle in about half an hour maximum. Otherwise you spend so long just between menus and the game just being super slow and painful to play. And then it just crashes and all the progress is lost and you got to do it again and just Keep your fingers crossed that you can actually see the next map. I could only make it to the second one. That's the furthest I ever got. Some other things worth noting very quickly is that the models themselves in the arena and everything, it looks fine. Uh, it's not the ugliest thing I've ever seen, but I didn't really have any way to configure the resolution. So I was stuck at a thousand by 600 or something like that. So when that's stretched out on a 4K screen, doesn't look, you know, pretty as you can imagine. But even still, I found that it was mostly readable. It was a little bit blurry, but still readable. But then again, I don't need to wear glasses or anything. So I'm lucky in that regard. Overall, if it was a little less frustrating to play, I'd actually recommend people check it out. Gladius. This one took me by surprise because I had never even heard of it before making this video. The premise is that you're taking over your father's gladiator school following his murder and work with your partner to gain popularity for the school and become stronger via leveling up, applying skills and buying new gear. Or if you want a different start, you can pick a second character who is a barbarian woman. You travel an overworld to fight at different arenas and earn your right to fight by collecting badges and winning tournaments. It uses grid based movement in its turn based combat allows the hiring of different types of gladiators such as beasts or heavy builds and introduces some variability with choke points in the map or boxes that can be climbed on top of granting higher damage when hitting enemies below you it's not just warriors and regular animals that you'll fight though there's some straight up just supernatural foes as well like minotaurs just straight up minotaurs in the arena for you to fight Playing it on an emulator makes it look sharper, but there's no getting past some of the graphical issues, for lack of a better word, like 
textures that just lack all manner of detail and look very blurry. The voice acting sounds a little flat, but it's not terrible. I have heard so much worse. Are you sure you want to go through this with me? You must be joking, Valens. How long have we fought side by side? For as long as I can remember. Hey, wait up! It's been 11 years, ever since my father died in the games. Munio took me in and treated me as a son. And you've always treated me like a brother. My father was only repaying a valiant hero, the cornerstone of his school. It is a huge game, so if you're after a big time sink and, you know, don't mind potentially spending more than 30 hours with this sort of gameplay, I do recommend this one. I enjoyed my time with it. Though it's worth noting that I haven't finished the game as I'm recording this section of the video. I've put about 12 hours into it, but I do intend to continue playing it. Gladiator Sword of Vengeance. It sucks. I was bored out of my fucking mind due to the game being a hack and slash that has nothing beyond a three button combo. You get a special attack, but all the first one does is make your attacks do more damage and you get more weapons, but you're still entirely limited to one of the most basic combat loops I've ever seen in a video game, let alone a hack and slash video game. I played for 45 minutes and thought I'd better check some gameplay from later sections and sure enough, as you can see from this gameplay from a channel called Lacry, I think it's pronounced, there's fuck all going on here. Skip over this one. Swords and Sandals, a web browser game from 2005 with a style that reminds me a lot of games I used to play on the old stick page website back in the day. You apply stats to your gladiator and even customize their look as you earn money to buy gear and level up by winning fights. I'm not sure what the game looks like beyond fight three though, because no matter what stats, I would always get shafted with terrible RNG and either miss every single swing or just be hit with critical attacks and killed instantly. You can easily just punch the name into Google and you're able to play it through the web browser or you can buy the series on Steam. Shadow of Rome. There are two parts to this game, the combat focus sections where you play as a gripper and the stealth sections where you play his twink friend trying to uncover information surrounding the assassination of Julius Caesar. In combat, you're able to equip various weapons that have their own function. For example, Scimitar is excellent for slicing off limbs, whilst a halberd does monstrous damage and can hit multiple enemies at once. Throughout Agrippa's experience as a gladiator, we do get different arenas and layouts and even mission types. One has you rescuing hostages from cages and escorting them back to the entrance, whilst another will be a brawl with different animals. I couldn't help but feel there was something very Japanese about the game due to the overall goofiness, the kind of ridiculous designs that some of the enemies have later on, and also this strange way that characters sort of seem to be overacting in a lot of cutscenes. Lo and behold, it was made by Capcom, and the second game that was being worked on was cancelled and repurposed into what would become Dead Rising. And you can really feel the bones of that game in this one with its satisfying gore, weapon feedback, and sound design for the hits. Even when a weapon breaks, it almost looks like the animation is no different. Unfortunately, as a package though, the story is not interesting, the stealth sections are super basic and just unengaging, and even though the combat is a lot of fun, it can also be incredibly annoying due to stiff controls, an abysmal lock-on, and a couple of boss fights that are just kind of drawn out and tedious. A sequel that focused only on the gladiatorial side of things and improved combat further could have made for a great game, but I do love Dead Rising a lot, so I can't complain too much because we did at least get that. Colosseum Road to Freedom. The overall story takes a backseat in this one due to the combat being the main focus. You play a newly made slave who is forced to fight in the arena for your freedom. I guess it's easy to compare to Shadow of Rome given they released so close to each other and are both Japanese games set in Rome. Though I will say Colosseum has the better combat. Your face buttons act as high, low, left and right attacks. The choice between which will depend on the opponent you're facing and their own gear that they're wearing. And then you've also got 
dodge roll, lock, parry, and special moves. I really liked the animation work used for the 360 degrees of combat as well. If you flick the stick in any direction and attack, your character will turn around and do a jab attack. Helpful when surrounded, and it just looks really good in practice. Unfortunately though, it doesn't have much blood and it has no gore. We don't get to see arms flying off or decapitations, but unlike Shadow of Rome, the game is focused entirely on this arena combat, so we don't have to deal with anything that takes us away from that. Shadow of Rome does have battle selection, so you can just go back and try to get higher scores in the arena and just enjoy that gameplay. But it does require you to play the game in the first place, which means slogging through the boring stealth sections. So as an overall package, I would say Colosseum has Shadow of Rome beat, though I did really miss the gore and impact of fights. You're also able to equip yourself with weapons that you find in the battle and take them out into subsequent battles, or you can sell the gear and buy stuff from an armorer that's at the arenas. Just be prepared for the uh, voice acting for the game as well. It's it's not good. Uh, they'll never give us our freedom in a shithole like this. I'm best better to stand out and try and attract the attention of a Roman traitor. We might as well consider ourselves dead. So, where do you find your sorry ass then? Shut up over there. Don't get too friendly. We might be facing each other in battle soon. I'm in control of your lives now. You'll soon know the reason you've been brought here. Ah, remember when Total War games were good? Spartan Total Warrior really changed up the formula for this series by being a third person hack and slash, as opposed to the large scale strategy games that it's known for. The character models are much lower detailed than other games at the time, but that's on purpose so the devs could fit large amounts of people on screen at once without sacrificing performance. You've got a wide sweeping attack and a regular attack that you mash along with abilities like calling down lightning and decapitating multiple enemies at once. The actual gladiator part of the game, and really I use that term loosely, it only exists in this arena mode where you take on waves of increasingly difficult enemies. I found it hard to properly keep track of when I was being attacked due to the models kind of blending in all together and they don't really have as much of a tell Unlike Dynasty Warriors combo focus system with Spartan, I am also felt like I had to turtle up and keep the enemies only in front of me. Overall, it didn't make for a terribly interesting combat system, but I do think it's worth applauding the efforts from the devs to get so many characters on screen and have the game running as smooth as it does. So that's a really cool technical achievement to take note of. Ratchet Gladiator, deadlocked if you're from the States. This game fucking slaps. I'd imagine a lot of people are familiar with the franchise, but if you haven't played Gladiator, get on it. Ratchet, Clank and Owl are captured by a company that run a televised Gladiator game show. You're forced into different combat arenas with various enemy types and objectives. Weapons are upgraded by killing enemies and you've got different mods for things such as your grenade launcher, leaving lava pits behind. The actual shooting involves a lot of strafe shooting with a generous helping of aim assist, but also changes up in some ways like putting you in a mech vehicle. The humor of the Ratchet games was always very satirical with its portrayal of capitalism and commercials. It's no different here and is genuinely a funny and entertaining game to play through. Hey, oh. hey Ratchet, <laughs> I have something to show you. Meet your new battle bots. Call me Merc. This here's Green. Uh, hi, sir. I got them off a former contestant who, um, uh, won't be needing them anymore. Don't worry, boss. You won't end up like that last guy. I hope not. I still have nightmares about it. Oh, suck it up, Green. Music is just incredible, and all the animation work on Ratchet during the cutscenes looks really fucking good, especially for its time. I highly recommend a channel called The Gaming Brit Show. He has a lot of really great videos on the Ratchet series and also does other games outside of the series. His videos are excellent. Gladiator Begins. 
So this one is a sequel to Colosseum Road to Freedom. Another game was released in the series called Clan of Champions, and both of these are basically downgrades of Colosseum. I'm only going to briefly cover Gladiator, which has the same bones as Colosseum with its high, low, and side attacks, parry and blocking, but you can no longer flick the stick in whatever direction to hit an enemy. The violence is much more pronounced due to the blood being darker, so it sort of stands out a little bit more. And some of the character models look a little better in that the faces don't look as frightening, but it looks way stiffer overall. The animation quality for Colosseum is just a lot better than what it is for Gladiator Begins. Overall though, I wouldn't really recommend this game. It's a hack and slash without really much depth to make it worth playing. And I just could not really stomach more than an hour with it. Spartacus Legends. I debated putting this one in the video because you can't play it anymore now that the servers are down, but it kept showing up in a few lists when I was looking up games. So I thought I'd just quickly cover the fact that this isn't a game that you can play at all. What it was, was a fighting game in the same style as Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, but with the Spartacus IP attached to it. The gameplay you're seeing comes from Jump In Productions. Rip in peace to those who enjoyed the game and can't do anything with it now. Rise Son of Rome, an Xbox One launch title that still looks incredible today. Anyone who has played the Batman Arkham series will immediately feel at home, minus the depth. You deflect incoming attacks, use a single button as your main attack, have access to a roll, and can also hit enemies with a stun to open them up for more attacks. When an enemy has been hit enough, you can initiate an execution, which acts as a QTE that becomes very stale very quickly. There are no interesting combos or change-ups that really happen in the game. If you're after some arena-style fighting, there is a mode that's just that, but after only two encounters, you've probably seen everything there is to this game. There's some progression by way of tiered loot to wear in the arena mode, and that's about it as far as the gladiator part is concerned for this one. If you're genuinely curious about the game, I would suggest simply looking up some 4K videos to appreciate the visuals because they really do look amazing. And give the soundtrack a listen as it's composed by Orislav Slavov, the man who would later go on to do the absolutely incredible soundtracks of Divinity Original Sin 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. So yeah, unfortunately, overall, just skip this title. It is just not really worth a playthrough, even out of curiosity. I think if you're curious about the story, just watch a video on it because the gameplay is just such a drag. It's going to be a really boring experience. X Anima. I fucking suck at this game and really struggled to get into it for that reason. But I do still think it's a super cool an interesting game. It should be noted though that it's been in early access for nine years. So if this does look like something you'd be into, make sure you accept the fact that it's likely not getting a full release. The main game is a dungeon crawler, but there is an arena mode. So that's part of the reason why I've included it in this list. You recruit people and fight to level them up and attain skills to make your life easier. I say easier, but the main draw, the physics-based combat, is also the biggest hurdle and it never really feels easier even as you unlock skills. Movement is tank-based if you're using WASD, or you can use right-click to guide your character around. And then when entering combat mode, your left and right is strafe left and right, and the left click becomes your attack button. You have to swing your mouse around to actually give your attacks the proper momentum which is interesting and engaging and all, but your camera is static unless you manually move it. So when you start swinging your mouse around, you're also potentially throwing yourself off when it comes to movement, and it can be a little disorienting in hectic fights. Doubly so if you swing your cursor too far around and have to remember that your left and right strafe becomes inverted due to the tank controls. So if the camera is facing your back, left and right is very easy, but then if you accidentally turn around, you'll find that the left and strafe is now sort of like up and down, depending on where your cursor lands. 
In the main game, you're able to manipulate various objects to make life for the AI more difficult and sort of cheese some of the fights, but it's not an option in the arena. If you're after a system to learn that has a huge skill ceiling, but is very satisfying when you just get those hits right, definitely check this one out. Gorn, the first VR game I ever played, and it's still a lot of fun today. I found it a little on the easy side, even when bumping up the difficulty, but that doesn't take away how fun it is to bonk enemies on the head or rip their arms off with your bare hands. You make your way through various doors with a boss to be found at the end to signify completion of each arena. As you progress, more and more weapons will be unlocked and are very fun to use. The hit registration is excellent and the gore is top notch. So if you're after something violent, this is an easy choice. Gladius VR. It plays essentially like a much jankier blade and sorcery, but without the same level of satisfaction from plunging your weapon into someone or decapitating them. I ran into a couple of glitches, like the tutorial refusing to progress. I couldn't find a way to switch off the stupid whoosh noise that happens every time the camera turns. And another weird oddity was the game struggling to actually register what my hand was trying to grab off the wall. Given that Blade and Sorcery plays so well, I didn't have anything pop out in Gladius that made me want to keep playing it. But if you're specifically after more variety in the arena layouts, enemies, and general encounter design, then I would suggest Gladius for that reason. There's even chariot races, so maybe that's enough for some people. It's worth noting that although I wasn't really having as much fun with it, especially because of how much more I enjoy Blade and Sorcery, I wouldn't really say it's a bad game from what I played. Gladiators of the Arena. This looks as though it was a project or something, maybe just a practice run to get a hand on developing games, but the developer is selling it for money and, well, look at it. It doesn't play very nice at all, doesn't look very nice, and I don't want to try to be mean to the developer or anything, I hope they're able to learn a lot from this and they can make something better in the future, but this has been sold for $11.50, so if this was just a free thing to give a go, so be it. But not when this is charging money. I, I have to say that this is just really bad. Age of Gladiators 2, Rome. Firstly, the dev apparently has a habit of mostly abandoning his games. I'm not sure what state they're all left in and if they're completely broken in particular areas, but this should be known just in case. And secondably, I didn't play the first game or the sci-fi spin-off titled Age of Gladiators 2 Death League. Supposedly the remaster for the first game is basically a re-release and not a full-blown remaster. And I did hear some good things about Death League, so if you're interested more in the sci-fi aspect, go check that one out instead of this one. Onto the game, it's a management game where you build up a gladiator school, hire staff and fighters, and train up the fighters. You can take control of the fights yourself if you wish and actually do the inputs for your attacks or your abilities or simply spectate or just skip the fights altogether to get to the result and you can just focus on the management aspect of the game. Some random events will happen that require your input and a choice to be made such as helping your gladiator get away with murder or passing on your inheritance to the poor. I didn't spend much time with the game at all due to just not really feeling this style and it was very frustrating having RNG be such a bitch to me that in one fight, I was hit with so many high damage attacks in a row that by the time I died, my guy only brought the other fighter's health bar down a quarter. If it seems like your kind of game, be sure to pray to RNGesus before each fight and pray hard. Blade and Sorcery, another VR title and it's excellent. You can jump into a few different locations to fight waves of enemies and it can be customized as well with different difficulty options. Combat involves your usual mix of medieval era weapons, but also some magic and a dedicated slow-mo button to really nail those fine movements and line up the perfect slow-mo shot on someone. Hit registration is great, same as Gorn. It only stuffs up a little bit if you're too close to an enemy and then the game starts freaking out trying to register hits. Swinging and stabbing your enemy has great feedback, especially the stabbing part as a sword will have noticeable slowdown as you plunge it into a person. 
and even gets a little stuck as you try to rip it back out. Being able to impale people just never really feels old in this game. You've got a telekinesis ability as well, that's handy for picking up weapons from afar, flinging weapons at people, and also using the gravity magic to just grab people off their feet. The feeling of immersion and interactivity in this game is very reminiscent of Boneworks and I highly recommend it for anyone interested in playing more VR games. Blackthorn Arena. Okay, another game that has more or less been abandoned when going off some of the comments from reviewers, so please keep that in mind. It's a management game similar to Age of Gladiators, but in combat I kind of saw it as a successor to an earlier game, The Gladiators of Rome. But this time, there's auto attacking, thank god. You're able to change a few things such as if a fighter will fight more aggressively or defensively and then can just set and forget. No more selecting each fighter to attack. When you're back in your school, you're able to assign gladiators to various positions like chef or doctor and train up your slaves with multiple classes to work towards or genres as the game calls them weirdly. And a lot of skills are on offer here. This management section kind of annoyed me though due to the roles for doctor and whatnot needing a slave, not staff. So it feels a bit silly initially having to equip someone to one of these positions and then unequip them to drag them into the arenas for fighting. It's buggy, but wasn't terribly broken from what little I played. It's just a bit frustrating. It doesn't feel like it's sort of balanced right. A lot of the fights are quite difficult with enemies being much higher level than you. And it just felt like I was doing something wrong that I could only do these arena fights where I either didn't have enough people to fight or the people that I could fight were two or three levels above me. If I was chasing this style of game, even though it's not that polished, I still would check this one out and put more time into it. But for anyone watching, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to other people. I would say have a look at the reviews and get a better idea of what issues people are having from those who have put way more time into the game than I have. Clone Drone in the Danger Zone, a voxel based roguelike that has some banging music and a gameplay loop that is fun for a bit, but I didn't find it as engaging as some others in its genre like Robo Quest or Risk of Rain 2. You have a dash that can be upgraded, can jump and swing overhead or with sweeping attacks to slice your enemies up, though they can do exactly the same to you if you're careless and get hit. After each round, you descend into a room to receive an upgrade, whether it be adding fire to your sword, gaining access to a spear, or going full Spartan by having the spear and combine it with a shield. Because I found the core gameplay a little on the basic side, I wasn't too interested in spending much time with it, but I do think it's really good, it's just simply not something I was vibing with. There is a demo, so please be sure to check it out. Gladiator About to Die like with Gladiators of the Arena, I hope the dev was able to learn something by making this because from a customer's perspective, it is really bad. Menus were disappearing off to the side, so I had to just take a guess if it could use my arrows and then hit enter. Luckily that worked to progress through. Just trying to start the game required signing of contracts and it wasn't clear that's what was supposed to be done, so I kind of had to use a bit of guesswork on my end, it was not intuitive in the slightest. It looks like it's mostly just assets thrown together, and I couldn't even equip my sword before entering the arena and taking part in its stiff, souls-like combat. So stay away from this one. Alina of the Arena. I was pleasantly surprised with this. I am aware of games like Slay the Spire, which this is inspired by, but had never played them. Even just the demo of the game kept me playing for nearly two hours, trying to find what works with the decks and finally beat the final boss. So if you're unaware, these games you will progress up through fights, or you can choose to go to the shop to buy items and such, and you get new cards to build up your deck, and they all have various abilities and will help you out in some way. So you're trying to find what kind of synergies work best. I really loved the art style and the music as well. 
If these style of games were more of my usual thing, I'd be buying this and jumping back into it for sure. For now though, it's going onto my wish list to buy later, and I really recommend it for others. We who are about to die. I hope development goes well for this title because there is already a really good foundation here in early access, and it was started by one person as well, who now has a small team. You are rolled a randomized character with pros and cons that offer various bonuses or negatives and set out into arenas to earn money and fame that can be spent on upgrades, weapons, armor, and upkeep related stuff like repairs. The combat is super janky, but it's interesting. There is potential for it to become great. When clicking your attack button, you'll bring your arm up and can move the mouse in certain directions to initiate swings from those directions. If you time it right, you'll swing with more speed and thus do more damage. Battles are randomized too and you have to weigh up certain factors because one fight might be you and a team versus one person but barely any money as a reward and another fight might be a 1v1 with a higher level fighter but you'll get huge fame and a lot of money from winning. And your health doesn't just go up to full again after each fight. You have to spend money to heal yourself and it gets more expensive the more you do it. And you also get a small amount from winning your previous fight. So you kind of have to also weigh up, do you want to be more healthy to do a harder fight later and just do some easy ones in a row? It's really enjoyable trying to figure that out. Really the only thing I could see people disliking enough to not want to spend much time with it is just that janky combat because it seems as though blocks don't register properly all the time and some attacks look like they're supposed to hit but it just sort of misses or phases through the enemy. Hopefully by the time full release is out I'll have a solid game to return to. Gladiators Arena. Basically vampire survivors and those other style of games but way more boring unfortunately. I had accidentally upgraded my character enough that I could start each wave and not press a single button because my defense in combination with my lifesteal would just keep me alive indefinitely. Enemy numbers slowly increased each wave, but actual enemy variety stops at wave three or four or something. It's super cheap, but so are games like Vampire Survivors and Halls of Torment, so I don't really see any reason to pick this one up. Achilles Legend Untold. I don't know why this was listed in one of the reddit posts I came across because as per the advertisement from the dev team, it's an action RPG with Souls-like combat where you explore a sprawling map. Co-op apparently contains some sort of arena mode and it can be done solo if you're specifically wanting to scratch that gladiator arena style itch, though levels for it can't be unlocked without first discovering them in the story mode. So not exactly a gladiator game. And almost as if to add insult to injury, the very small amount that I played had terrible stutter. Like I didn't even travel very far and it was stuttering, just barely managing to give me decent frames on a very high end system as well. Mortal Glory 2, finally on the last game of the list. And it's another one in the vein of Slay the Spire. I think I had a little more fun with this one than Alina of the Arena and I'm eager to play more of it eventually. You take a character through a series of fights, events and some shopping and try to complete the run by killing the boss at the end. On the way you'll collect items, armor, weapons, more characters for your party and skill books that'll give you access to all sorts of abilities. A really great one I had fun with with one of my party members was being able to spawn in tornadoes and then later on I got a passive upgrade that caused any environmental effects to have this spread property to it. So when I spawned the tornadoes, they really started to spread and filled up half the arena. I enjoyed the more simplistic art style and really liked the music and there's quite a few characters to unlock and play around with. I definitely recommend people check this one out. I really enjoyed my time with it. And there we go, end of the video. Unless I missed it in one of the other games or it just exists somewhere and I didn't get up to it, I didn't see any characters screaming are you not entertained? And that just seems like a real missed opportunity. If there's any at least decent Gladiator games that you can think of that I didn't cover, please let me know in the comments what the name of the game is and 
I'll try to check it out. I don't know if I'll do another video of this for Gladiator games specifically, unless there's a whole bunch more that's worth doing an entire video on, but I would like to find some good titles if there are any. And until the next video, have a good one.